as of the filming of this video, 15 days from now, 30th anniversary edition is going to go on sale. We have a Mox Pearl here that is not the retro edition border. Just the basic Mox Pearl that's going for $3,000 in bids. I'm going to talk about all of the things that I hate about this auction. Then we're going to talk about a conversation that needs to be had about Collector's Edition and International Collector's Edition. Nothing on this channel is financial advice. This is all an opinion. The video starts right now. Highest level of gratitude to our patrons who power the channel through Patreon. Check out the Patreon link in the description to learn about monthly giveaways, VIP Discord access, and even our official playmat. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake and welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel Are Magic. Today, we are going to be discussing the $3,000 Mox Pearl that you see here. In the previous video, if you want to watch that, I'll put it in the cards. We mentioned this Mox Pearl when we were just having some reactions to 30th anniversary openings, and it was sitting at around $800. It now sits at $3,000. In this video, we're going to talk about, first of all, everything that I hate about this auction. We're still 15 days out from this product being released. Then later on in the video, we're going to talk about a conversation that needs to be had about this product and Collector's Edition and International Collector's Edition, which came out in 1993, which are also non-tournament legal cards. Only difference between the two is... Uh, what is written on the back of them. One says International and one says Collector's Edition. So we're going to talk about that later on in the video. But first, I want to talk about everything that I hate about this auction. A lot of different things. If you do like these videos, click like and subscribe. That's a great way to support the channel. And also, if you have been enjoying your time here at Jake and Joel, head on over to Patreon. Help us out in making this a full-time thing so that you can get more better Jake and Joel content. Oh man, we should just dive in. So first of all, like I was just saying, 15 days out from this product even being released. We have a $3,000 slabbed 9.5 Mox Pearl. Let's talk about this first thing, which was I saw some comments where people are like, how did they get it graded so quickly? Let's just break that down really fast. We're going to do that very quickly. This is CGC Universal. You come on over here to CGC. You can see that they, they grade trading cards. And then we have our services and fees. And I'll just go ahead and break it down for you exactly what I think was used. It would have been an express here. If you're submitting cards under the express grading tier, mark each side of your shipping box with EX in large bold letters. So that's a card up to a max value of $10,000. Safe to assume one of the Mox proxies of 2022, probably going to be worth up to that. So they paid a, a fee of 70 bucks to get a five day turnaround on this. All right. And then they also did this, the subgrades, which yeah, right here. And you can see there is no additional turnaround time for the express and walkthrough tiers. So they paid for express and then they paid 15. So $85 to get a really quick turnaround on the Mox Pearl. That's breaking that down for everybody who was like, how did they do that so quickly? That's how they did it. They probably were at the convention, had somebody who worked for them buy one of the cards or they were given the card. It's all speculation. Everything is an opinion. Everything here is just for fun, which brings us back to here. Now we have the $3,000 Mox Pearl. It's got its subgrade. It's got 9.5 centering, 10 surface, 9.5 corners, 9.5 edges. Spoiler alert, all of the cards coming out of these packs are going to be pack fresh 9.5s. Unless the centering is really crazy and you get like a 9 or an 8.5, all of these are going to be pack fresh. This isn't like finding some actual relic from 1993. This is printed in 2022 that we're gonna talk about that other conversation later. Now, the other thing is this, if you come over here and you type in 30th anniversary mocks in the eBay, you're gonna get this. As of right now, I haven't seen a Lotus appear. So that's another part of this, which is, oh, well, if this is going for 3000 and it's not even the retro border and it's not even a Black Lotus, well, the Black Lotus is probably gonna be worth $20,000. I do not think Wizards of the Coast is going to be putting cards that are $10,000 or $5,000 into $250 packs. I just don't believe it. So like I mentioned, the retro border. We don't even have any idea of what the retro border is worth. We see a raw mox in the mox ruby, pack fresh, no reserve, up to $1,075. And then we see the CGC graded 9.5 that's already up to $3,000. So in a weird way, it's kind of tantalizing, right? It's like, ooh, this product that I've been really bearish on, there appears to be a lot of value in it. 
Well, I think it's inflated. I know that this is a renowned seller with 100% feedback, but I think that there could be shill bidding going on here. Like I said earlier, you have a lot of people that believe this product has an inflated price that think this product sucks. We have a couple videos that prove in the comments section that people want nothing to do with it. And we need to think about this. So if this is Hasbro's end of year pump, right? Big, huge cherry on top after Brothers War, after Double Masters, after all of these hardcore heavy hitting products that are taking us into the end of the year, this is their final like uppercut grand slam. Hasbro stock is in decline. We're not going to get into all of that. The Honestly, the S&P is in decline. The economy is in decline and has been. We're seeing a little bit of an uptick, but we're not going to get into all of that. We can talk about, though, there are individuals and people and institutions that want this product to do very well. Let's take a look at the bids here really quick. We're going to go down here to when it was first listed. It was listed on November 7th at 412. 94 cents was the starting price. And then quickly on the 7th, by the end of the 7th, it was up to $350. Then on the 8th, got up to 500 another bid for 500 and then as we go up on the 8th by the end of the 8th which i believe was when we saw it this was when we made our last video we saw it sitting at 810 or around that we may have seen it yeah no because we made the video on the 8th on the 10th by the end of the 10th sitting at 2900 and then we have a bid for 3000 on the 12th bid amount sitting at $3,000. So I want to talk about this because this is kind of crazy. We have bidding that goes from 800. This is all looking kind of like, all right, whatever. I, I know that they hide the usernames. We see some massive, massive jumps in bids here. This person won star, star, star E decided that they were just going to drop a bid in $800, essentially almost $900 higher than what the previous bid was. And we t have one that goes to 2000 and then this person says, well, fuck it, I'm gonna drop 700 more dollars right on top of it. And then boom, before you know it, we're at 3000 and there it sits. Now we may look at this tomorrow, I might monitor it and see where it ends. But I think that, you know, in my opinion, there's, there's probably some shill bidding going on here. Say you have two people that are whales or whatever, they have a vested interest in this product. They might say, hey, that 9.5 Pearl is not anywhere near where we want it to be. So they're going to get on the phone, get with their friend. They're going to be like, I'm going to put in a bid for $500. And then later on, you do another bid. We're going to get this up to where we want it to be. They're thinking about, you know, I'm going to buy $50,000 worth of this product. I'm going to buy 50 displays of it. I don't want to be selling $800 graded mox pearls. I don't want to be selling those. I want to be selling $3,000 graded mox pearls. That's more than three times the value, almost four times the value. I want to be selling graded 2022 proxies to all of the Timmies that think that this isn't going to happen again. And I want to get the most bang for my buck. So if you're a whale account and you have that kind of cash, it would behoove you, you know, to be like, well, I'm going to bid it up. We're going to get it up that way when this does sell. And hopefully somebody tries to snipe it for more than me, some sort of fish. So these guys are going to bid up the mocks and then it's not even the most attractive mocks, which is like mock sapphire, right? That's the blue mocks. It isn't even the it isn't even the Black Lotus. So now you have all of the people that are bears, bears being the people that think this product isn't worth its price, that are bearish on it. They think that the price of the cards is going to go down. You have all these people that are having a little bit of a, oh, wait, I didn't think these cards that, uh, were going to be worth anything. And a lot of the old players, the, the longtime collectors like me and people that have been around here for a while are going to see right through this. But for anybody who's new, say it's like somebody who's like, they're just into TCGs or maybe they have a lot of cash and they're just like, oh my God, I've read that Magic the Gathering was reprinting reserve list. I'm going to go buy like freaking 10 displays of this shit and pull myself a Lotus. Shit's going to be worth $10,000. No, you're, you're comparing something that came out in 1993 and 94 to something that came out in 2022. It's massively different. And so the players that they're trying to get to buy this are, are whales and then people that, don't, that just don't understand it, that don't understand that it can happen again. When you hook a whale and they start spending a lot of money on your game, you don't want to burn them with a negative product. They're not going to want to come back. They're not going to do it again. Yeah, I know that I've been um, probably one of the biggest bears on this product. I think that it sucks. I think it's overpriced. I don't think it celebrates the game well. And I sure as shit don't think that these bids 
or the ending bids of especially this Mox Pearl and this Mox Ruby that we just looked at should be taken into any sort of consideration of what the prices of these cards are actually going to do when they're released in mass. And again, I'm not saying that shill bidding is 100% happening on these items. It is just my opinion. It could be going on. There are people in high to reach places that again have a vested interest in this product doing very well. So there's a couple things we need to consider here before we move on and talk about the collector's edition and international collector's edition argument. The first thing we need to talk about is we haven't seen any mocks in retro border. So that's supposed to be tantalizing. We're supposed to be like, ooh, ah, if these are the prices of these, then the sky is a limit on the retro border. The other thing is we haven't seen a Lotus up. So if we're like, wait, if the Mox Pearl and not even, it's not even the Mox Sapphire, it's not even the, the Black Lotus, it's not even the Retro Lotus. Oh my God, the Retro Lotus is probably going to be $50,000, I bet. I'm going to be able to buy $250 packs from Wizards of the Coast that were printed in 2022 that are going to allow me to buy a house. They're printing free tendies into the 2022 Ethersphere. This is the first time that they're just giving out. Oh my God, they're giving out cars. No. The rug pull on this is going to be the, the craziest rug pull you've ever seen in the history of magic, in my opinion. And what that is, is that's where all of the people that have a lot of money into this, they get out and then everybody else is left holding the bag on these cards. And so you're going to have people, I don't know when it's going to happen, but if you have people that are buying $3,000, 9.5 graded Mox Pearls in 2022 that came out in 2022, there's going to be a moment where everybody realizes, holy shit, these are not worth anything. It might be when Wizards of the Coast decides, hey, let's print Mox Pearl serialized in, in the new Kaladesh set. One of 500, there'll be 500 of them. How about we do 500 Mox Pearls? That way we don't even do every Mox. We could save the other Mox and, and we could save Lotus and we could save Dual Lands. We'll just put 500 serialized Mox Pearls into the new Kaladesh set. And then everybody who bought this Mox Pearl is going, oh shit, what did I do? They just did it again, which is a perfect segue and why we need to talk about the Collector's Edition and the International Collector's Edition argument. Because I've seen this popping up on a bunch of comments on videos, and it's just something that we need to shut down in its tracks before people spiral out of amok. We are over here at the MTG Wiki, and I'm just going to read this for you. Approximately 8,500 to 9,000 sets were printed for the United States and Canada Collector's Edition, and another 5,000 were printed for international release. These cards, when we're talking, let's just talk about the Power Nine for a second, okay? Alpha. Beta, Unlimited, Collector's Edition, International Collector's Edition. For anybody who doesn't know, they just essentially printed Beta into the Collector's Edition and International Collector's Edition. And unlike the product that they released in 2022, the 30th Anniversary Edition, they just decided to give you all the cards from the set so that you could experience all of it at once. I was going to read all of this to you, but that's essentially the TLDR of it. So this comment that I keep seeing pop up is Jake... I think we need to compare these 2022 proxies, Mox Pearl that I was talking about. People are saying we need to compare them to the gold-backed Collector's Edition and International Collector's Edition cards that came out in December of 1993. Cards that came out 30 years ago. And this is this is where you're going to see the, the title of this video, and this is where it comes from. The rules have changed, folks. The rules have changed because those old rules were based on the thought that the entire population of Power 9 existed only in Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, and then International and Collector's Edition sets. Take the entire population of Black Lotus that exists. Old rules, after the reserve list was established, you could have bootleg cards and counterfeits pop up, but the entire population of Black Lotus existed on Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, and in the Collector's Edition sets. The authentic versions being Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, of course, and then the Collector's Edition sets being the next best thing that you could buy if it wasn't in your budget. Okay? So people saying that we need to compare this new 2022 product to those old prices, well, those old rules are gone, folks. That's no longer part of the, the game. Those rules don't mean shit. Those operated by the thought that Wizards of the Coast was never going to reprint reserve list in any capacity. And now they have. They've done it in this 2022 product. So stop saying that these cards should be comparable in price to those old relics from 1993. It's not even close. These cards should be a fraction of the price because now the precedent has been set 
The old rules are destroyed. The old rules have been broken. And the president is set that Wizards of the Coast is going to do this again. If it sells out, and it probably will sell out because people are just going to buy it because anyway. There's going to be a lot of people who don't understand what we understand, which is that that Mox Pearl price is entirely inflated. We're in a FOMO hype wave. The set doesn't come out for another 15 days as of the filming of this video. So we can't compare these new prices to old 30-year cards, 30-year-old cards. It's ridiculous. It's it's like, I, I that makes me think when I see this comment that it's a shill who's like, no, no, look, I can, hold on, guys, hold on. No more troll comments. <laughs> give me, give me a sec. Give, give me the room here. <laughs> well, Jake, I think that we should compare them to collector's edition and international collector's edition because those are also non-tournament legal cards, and uh, you know the price of those is very high. So these being essentially the same thing, well, they should be very high as well, and they have a black border. Okay, Jake. No, you're. It doesn't hold water. There's so many holes to poke in that theory in hindsight is going to be our best friend here when we look back in a couple years and see what they did wizards of the coast what they can do is they can say well you know what jake i don't care what you say and we're not going to print them again because then yeah sure if wizards of the coast says okay we're never gonna ever do it again <laughs> okay this is it one and done we're only doing it once promise forever signed in blood it'll never happen again then maybe just maybe the price of these 2022 cards could be in the future comparable to the old relics from 1993 collector's edition and international collector's edition but do you think wizards of the coast is going to leave that money on the table if this does well you don't think they're going to print a black lotus serialized in the future when the game is like gasping for breath and they're just like how do we get people to buy it what can we do that we have not done you know i'm right Peel the curtain back. They're just going to do it again. Let's recognize the graded 9.5 CGC mocks. And, and that's probably why they didn't go with PSA or Beckett is because the turnaround was going to take longer. So they went with a quick turnaround, a quick, cheap turnaround. And then they have a Mox Ruby up here that's going as well. I don't, this is not the same seller. We have these things that I think are supposed to be beacons of, um, I guess, copium maybe like things for people to see and then think oh my gosh this is this is going to be where the prices go everybody is wrong i need to get this because if i just pull one of these and you know the thought is oh my god well it's pack fresh so it's going to be a nine five if i pull it and what if i pull a 10 what if i pull a 10 it's going to be a ten thousand dollar mox pearl wizards of the coast is not putting ten thousand dollar bills five thousand dollar bills into 2022 packs absolute tomfoolery uh steer clear of this share this video to a friend who might be like wait i uh, uh, no that can't be possible that product is going to be amazing they're giving out free five thousand dollar bills in every box and there's dual lands and it, it's just there's so much wrong with it i hope that this video has been helpful again if you do like these videos click like and subscribe i know that this has been long-winded i wanted it to be faster but i I wanted to get all of these thoughts out there. Definitely let me know how you feel about this product in the comments. And if you do enjoy these videos, click like and subscribe. You can help the channel out in a big way by going over to Patreon. Just sign up at any level. Help us make this a full-time thing. And uh, let's all fight FOMO together. We'll talk to you later. I'm Jake. This has been another Jake and Joel joint. Uh, goodbye.